Let's now look at this question. In context to amniocentesis, which of the following option is incorrect? A. It is done in between 15 to 20 weeks of pregnancy. B. Sex of fetus can be determined with this test. C. It leads to abortion. D. It is used for detecting the chromosomal abnormalities. So children, the question is asking you to identify the incorrect statement. Okay. Now, amniocentesis is a procedure that is conducted during the period of pregnancy. That means it is a prenatal test. Now, it's not necessary that everyone has to go through this test, right? But if there is a suspicion of a possible genetic disorder in the developing fetus, this is the test that is conducted. So, it helps in studying the chromosomal pattern in the amniotic fluid. Now, what is the amniotic fluid? This is a fluid that surrounds the developing fetus, okay, as when the fetus is developing in the mother's womb. And this helps us to detect any kind of genetic abnormalities. Now, when is this done? Well, this is normally done around the 15th to the 20th week of pregnancy. A small amount of the amniotic fluid is removed, you know, by using a syringe. And this amniotic fluid, which contains fetal cells and some dissolved substances, is studied, analyzed, and checked for any genetic abnormalities such as sickle cell anemia, Down syndrome, Kleinfelter syndrome. These are all some of the genetic disorders that can be picked up by studying the amniotic fluid of the fetus. Okay, by studying the amniotic fluid that is surrounding the fetus. Now, this is done to determine the survivability of the fetus. Okay, so it helps us to understand if the developing fetus can survive the survivability of the fetus. And it does not lead to abortion. Amniocentesis does not lead to abortion. But yes, there is a small risk of miscarriage. Okay, there is a small risk of miscarriage. So the right answer to this question in context to amniocentesis, which of the following option is incorrect? A. It is done in between 15 to 20 weeks of pregnancy. That is correct. So that's not our option. Sex of fetus can be determined with the test. Yes, along with the genetic abnormalities, this test is also used to detect the sex of the developing fetus. So this also is correct, but that's not our answer. It leads to abortion. No, amniocentesis does not lead to abortion. Yes, there is a small risk, but just by performing amniocentesis, it does not mean that the, you know, mother or rather the pregnant woman will abort. No, this is the incorrect statement. So this is our answer. It is used for detecting chromosomal abnormalities. Yes, this is also correct. So that's not our option. So C is the right answer for this particular question. A new question for you. What are some measures implemented by the government of India to overcome the problem of population growth rate? A. Creating awareness. B. Statutory raising of marriageable age of females and males. C. Give incentives to couples with small families. Or D. All of the above. Well, the government of India has adopted various measures. Okay. To overcome the problem of the explosive population growth that is taking place in our country. At the time of independence, we were just, you know, uh, let's say just about 350 million people. But now we've crossed the billion mark, right? Now, what has the government done? The government has adopted various measures to ensure that the public is aware of the importance of you know, uh, controlling the growth of the population. How? They have created an awareness through advertisements, posters, bills. Can you see the stamp? It says, Hum do, hamare do. You're looking at this, uh, you're looking at this sign which says, Jodi zimedar, jo plan kare parivar. Right? So, they have spent, they have invested a lot through advertisements, posters and bills to create awareness among the public. Also, incentives are given to couples with small families such as, you know, given preference to the assignment of land or 
giving allotting surplus agricultural land see what happens is that many people in fact who are not educated or let's say who are not aware of all the repercussions of having you know a big family they are unaware of so many things so the government has you know it puts its effort to make sure that it reaches the masses to all parts of the country to the villages to the remotest places okay and another thing that the government has legalized is the statutory raising of marriageable age of females to 18 and males to 21 years so now if you look at this question what are some of the measures implemented by the government of india to overcome the problem of population growth rate is it only creating awareness no is it only statutory raising of marriageable age to males and females no is it only give incentives to couples with small families no in fact all three are correct so the right answer is d all of the above so d is your right answer a new question total fertility rate is defined as a the average number of children born to a woman during her lifetime b the number of live births per 1000 persons in unit time c the number of children a population must produce to replace itself from one generation to the next or d the difference between the birth rate and death rate in a population well tfr okay it is called tfr t f r or total fertility rate is defined as the average number of children born to a woman in her lifetime during her lifetime of child bearing years the average number of children that a woman can have is called as the total fertility rate now what is birth rate the number of live births per 1000 persons in unit time is called as the birth rate now the number of children a population must produce to replace itself from one generation to other is called as replacement level fertility okay so the number of children that needed to be added to a population from one generation to another is called as replacement level fertility and it is about 2.1 children per woman in a population and finally the difference between the birth rate and death rate in a population is known as the rate of natural increase okay so total fertility rate or tfr what is it it is defined as the average number of children born to a woman during a lifetime that is option a is the right answer we eliminate b c and d a is the right answer a new question for you which of the following is unrelated to the objective of family planning programs a achieve population stabilization b create awareness about sex related aspects of society provide infrastructural and professional expertise that is option c and d solve the problem of illiteracy and housing caused due to population explosion well the family planning program was introduced in india in the year 1951 okay under the name reproductive and child health care programs rch so it was initiated in the year 1951 can you see that it says jodi zimedar jo plan kare parivar a responsible couple is one that plans their family now the objectives of this rch program or all these programs were to create an awareness about sex related aspects of the society a reproductively healthy society is one in which there is absolute awareness of the well being you know the reproductive health the consciousness of a, of that so providing facilities such as infrastructure professional expertise as well as material support aimed at achieving reproductive health this is one of the objectives of such programs as well as achieve population stabilization by decreasing imr that is infant mortality rate and maternal mortality rate and morbidity rate what are all these 
infant mortality rate is nothing but reducing the number of infant deaths per thousand live births per thousand live births see infant mortality rate is defined as the number of infant deaths that takes place per thousand live births maternal mortality rate refers to the number of maternal deaths that takes place per 100000 live births morbidity rate the rate at which the a disease spreads in a population so one of the very important objectives is to achieve a population stabilization by declining by reducing all these rates okay but what the government programs you know what it does not include in the reproductive child health care program is or the rch program is not you know taking care of illiteracy or even providing land so the program such as sarva shiksha abhiyan and pradhan mantri awas yojana aim at solving the problems of illiteracy and housing respectively but this has nothing to do with the rch programs the family planning programs or rather the awareness of creating a reproductively healthy society okay so these do not come under that category so the right answer to this question which of the following is unrelated to the objectives of the family planning programs it is definitely d solve the problem of illiteracy and housing caused due to population growth this does not come under the rch programs so we eliminate a b and c d is the right answer now let's see this question what does a taboo on sex lead to a unsafe sex b decrease in maternal and infant mortality rates c behavioral and emotional breakdowns and d both option a and c well taboo on sex creates a situation where nobody is you know willing to address the topic of sex people do not want to openly discuss about the topic of sex so if that becomes a taboo like you know discussing sex whether it is with your children or with your you know with your peers with your friends with your relatives where you can comfortably sit and clear your doubts ask questions clear your doubt understand it it if you do not allow that to happen it can create a lot of problems it can lead to a lot of problems right so lack of education about sex and reproductive health leads to unsafe sex now you wouldn't want this to happen because unsafe sex leads to unwanted pregnancies teen pregnancies abortions it leads to unhealthy social attitude behavioral and emotional breakdowns people feel guilty people feel ashamed and so many other problems right so it is always good to speak to someone if you have any doubt about you know the topic related to sex and in the present scenario every educational uh, institution makes it a point to create this awareness among the children okay now lack of proper awareness about sex and related aspects may lead to increase in maternal and infant mortality rates not taboo or sex okay so that is what leads to an increase in mmr maternal mortality rate is the number of maternal deaths that takes place per 100000 live births imr or infant mortality rates refers to the number of infant deaths that takes place per 1000 live births so your right answer to this question what does a taboo on sex lead to unsafe sex yes decrease in maternal and infant mortality rates no behavioral and emotional breakdowns yes so your right answer you have two right answers so the option d serves correct you select option d because it says both a and c are right so you can eliminate a c because d says both a and c are correct so d is the right answer